How much does experience play a part in this matchup, do you think? It does. I mean, it does in, in both cases, but let's start with the defending cup champs. In Tampa, they are coming off winning the Stanley Cup. They just came through a very challenging series against the Islanders, winning game seven. But what I do like about their team and that experience is it's helped shape how they see the game and not really to dumb down any, any of their offensive instincts, which we were just talking about, but just recognizing, hey, what's appropriate for the situation? Do we need a more aggressive forecheck? Do we need a more passive one? Can we use that stretch pass that you alluded to earlier, the D2D -D stretch pass? Mm -hmm. Or is that appropriate here? Or is it a chip off the boards? All those different things play a huge factor for me, but more importantly, in the confidence of this group because they can play it any way you want it. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think also the fact that uh, they will be able to turn the page on Game 7 quickly because they realize the challenge. They won't be bothered by ticket requests and all that stuff because they've been through that kind of thing. So they have great experience. But... One thing Montreal has tried to do this year, although they don't have experience in cup, winning a cup as a team, is bring in guys who have done some women winning around the league, have won cups, have won internationally. You think of Stahl, you think of Perry Evanson, you think of Jake Allen. Guys that have done this, they can maybe impart a little bit of that to their team. And then the beautif beauty of youth. I don't think Cole Caulfield cares. No. Exactly. You don't know what you don't know. Cares. Exactly. He, he, your ignorance is bliss. Like, it's just like, I'm just playing and having a good time. So I think they're different ends of the spectrum, but I think also being that young, it can also be freeing in a, in a situation that could be stressful. As a president of the goalie union, how's the union feeling about this? How is the union? Matchup? We're pumped. I, I mean, bet. What are you, so upping the dues oh for next year's yeah. season? Of course. Two of the best in the world, yeah. and we get to see it on the brightest stage. Listen, I, I, really for any young goalie that's aspiring to play at a high level, or even just for fans or aficionados, it can't get any better than this. You have two future Hall of Famers in Carey Price and Andre Vasilevsky, and stylistically a little bit different in terms of how they play but two of the most influential goalies in the, in the position, simply based on how they play and what they do. And Carey Price, you see the elegance, his skating ability, uh, the fluidity to his game, and also the adjustments that he's made under the goalie coach, Sean Burke. And then in Vasilevsky, you see the power, the athleticism, the skill, the five. These are both five-tool goalies. And as you watch this, watch the little subtleties in their game. At times, how easy the way they make it seem to play the position. Uh, and, and really, you could say that for both of them, Johnny. Vasilevsky, for maybe a little bit more physically imposing since Carey Price has slimmed down as much as he has. Right. But uh, Vasilevsky is built like a, a power forward and moves equally as fluidly in and around the crease. He almost seems, everyone marvels at Carey Price when he's on top of his game. He seems so quiet. He's not doing much except stopping every puck. Where Vasilevsky, you see a little bit more lateral movement, more athleticism perhaps to what it appears like to, to someone who doesn't technically see it. But I'm curious about this. Mm. Sean Burke goes in middle of the year to work with Carey Price. Carey's gotten better as this year's gone on. Sean Burke played with me mm -hmm. under Benny Allaire. Totally. Benny Allaire with Henrik Lundqvist, mm -hmm. long time, one of the best goalie coaches. Do you see some of those Benny Allaire to Sean Burke to Carey Price tendencies? I do. And some of them I see, you can start with the positioning. If he reads that there's no lateral pass option, yeah. he's a little bit more aggressive. He'll right. come out a little further. If he sees potentially there's a little pass, all right, I'll stay a little bit further back. And also, too, he's really honed in on being a good first shot save goalie again. Yeah. You know, it's not just kind of, okay, I'm here. But, no, let me react to a puck if I have to and actually make a save as opposed to make a positional save mm. or a 50-50. Right. You know, some of those ones, because Carey Price, we've seen so much of him. He's so elegant. He'll be in position. He'll be like, okay, this is going to hit me. Oh, no, okay, well, I was in the spot. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that kind of a fine line. And, and lastly, I think for Carey Price, too, is his pushes, his pushing. When he goes from point A to B, he'll push hard and he'll stop hard. It's not the looping kind of elegance as right. much as we'd seen A little more before. explosive. A little more explosive. Although I never quite understand how he's so good at slowing down on his pads. It's crazy. Without really putting anything that's, in the edge. doesn't put his, his, his outside edge trying to slow down, the, uh, but he pushes and then somehow can control himself with his, I guess, his groin strength yep. on his pads to squeeze him in the ice to slow himself down. It's really remarkable, but the, the, the lineage from Benny Allaire to Sean Burke 100%. down to Carey Price. Impressive. Right. Yeah, certainly impressive to watch these two at their best, and we'll get to see him in the Stanley Cup final coming up.